Our final tale is entitled The Friendly Man, written by Pitt Pastel and read by Wade Thorson. I think I make a terrible friend. People tell me I'm inconsiderate, lazy, always late to pay them back when I borrow money. All around bad characteristics to have in a friend, I guess. <sighs> Whatever. Doesn't matter to me anymore. They don't know a fucking thing about bad friends. Not like the friend who lives with me now. I am lying awake in my apartment where the air conditioning doesn't even work, and I swear to God, I'm covered in sweat. It's just oozing out of my pores. It's 2.08 a.m., although it might as well be 2 p.m. because I haven't left my bed in so long, and with the shades drawn, I can't even tell when it's night or day anymore. I wish Siobhan was here. I really loved that guy. I think he liked me, too. But the last time he came by, I think it was like two or three weeks ago, or, or maybe yesterday. I don't even remember when. He pounded on the door two or three times, shouted my name along with a few unsavory words, and left. I was in bed at the time, with fucking tears running down my face. I wanted to open the door and just kiss him and apologize for all the pain I ever caused him. Tell him it wasn't my fault. Mr. Friendly watches me constantly, making sure I am unable to get out of my apartment. Like I could escape anyway since I've been confined to my bed. What does he want from me? I don't even know. When did it all begin though? March 16th, 2008. I, I remember the date exactly. I was leaving from my fiancé Siobhan's place early in the morning. He had to get ready for work, although, quite frankly, I was ready to fuck, but he wasn't going to have any of that. So I drove home with a cup of coffee and tunes from the radio. At least it was a pleasant drive home. When I got home, I checked the mailbox in the lobby and headed up the stairs to my apartment. Junk mail, junk mail, letter from the bank, etc. And right when I was about to unlock the door to my apartment, I see my neighbor Candace sitting outside her door. This was the first time I had seen her in weeks. I know a single woman in her 70s probably doesn't get a whole lot of visitors, but I almost thought she might have died, so you can imagine my relief when I saw her sitting in the hallway. At the same time, there was something not right about the way she looked. She looked disheveled, and she stared blankly at the wall in front of her. It was creeping me the fuck out, so I said, Hey, Candace, while trying to unlock my door as quickly as possible. He let me out, she said hoarsely, as if these were the first words she'd spoken in ages. She was looking at me now with, What's that look soldiers get in their eyes? The thousand-yard stare? Her red, curly hair was a complete mess. She looked dazed and dirty, and though she usually smelled of cigarettes, now she smelled of something far, far worse. Something I can't quite describe. Something that still makes me feel slightly ill whenever I remember it. Something inside of her had died, and her eyes were letting me know what she couldn't vocalize. And there were scars above and below her lips, as if she had them pierced or something. Who let you out of where, Candace? I replied uncomfortably. Did your son finally come to visit you like he said he would? No, she whispered. The friendly man. She looked crazed now, and it was starting to get a bit too unnerving. She looked towards her apartment door while toying with the gold bracelet she wore on her wrist. I nodded my head slowly and replied, Have a good one, as if I knew what she was going on about. What was I supposed to do anyways? If only I knew what was to come, I would have sat out in the hallway with poor Candace and never entered my apartment ever again. That night, I lay in bed thinking about Candace. She looked terrorized, and I was having a hard time attributing it to just being senile. Something frightened her real bad, but... What could it possibly be? 
As I pondered this, my mind began to drift, and soon I reached a state of half sleep. Thoughts started to make less sense, and sleep began to seep into my mind. And then I had strange dreams. I was in a dark sewer, and I was running. Running from what? I don't know. But I was running from someone or something. Water splashed about as I treaded through the murky, dark tunnel. It was too dark to see, but I knew I had to keep going, even if I couldn't see for shit. Eventually, I reached a small doorway and entered into a tiny room, furnished with a bed, a bookshelf, a mirror, and a writing desk with a small candle sitting on top. It looked oddly familiar until I realized it was my own room, though it looked absolutely horrid. Everything was grimy and dark liquid ran down the walls covering the floor. I frantically searched around for a weapon of some sort, opening drawers and feeling around under the bed. As I pulled my hand out from under the bed, I realized it was covered in the dark liquid that was running down the walls and it made me gag. And then I heard the loud breathing. From behind me, a man was standing in the doorway, quiet save for his breathing. A wheezy kind of breathing. He was naked and bald, covered in the same dark liquid that ran down the walls of the room we were in. The most horrifying thing about him, though, was that his lips were shut, and a padlock was pierced through his lips, rendering him unable to fully open his mouth. Keep the fuck away from me, I yelled. He edged closer. I yelled more, trying to move, but the dark liquid was rising and now it was too high for me to move. I was trapped in the thick goo and the dark stranger was coming closer and closer. He started to breathe louder and louder, and he began to speak something unintelligible and muffled. He brought his face inches from mine, and I realized his eye sockets were black and empty. Then the candle went out. I could feel the warm breath coming from his nostrils on my face in the darkness. My heart stopped, and then I woke up. It must have been just after midnight, because it was still pitch dark. I was drenched in sweat, still jarred by the dream I just had. I couldn't see anything in the darkness, but there was definitely a person in the room. Shh, said a voice from above me. A stranger placed a finger on my mouth. I attempted to bolt from the bed when I realized I was tied down to it with heavy rope. The fear was so overwhelming, my heart felt like it was attempting to shoot out of my chest. The stranger passed his hands over my face, almost caressing it. I couldn't see his face, though he looked tall and thin and his breathing was heavy. He appeared to not be wearing any clothes, and I immediately thought it was a drug addict attempting to rob me or or do worse, depending on what his intentions were. I have... I tried to speak, but my voice was too hoarse and it came out sounding odd. I... I have no drugs that you'd want, but... but I have money on my desk, I said with great difficulty. Take it, it's yours. Just need some new company, the stranger said in a low, raspy voice. It was strangely childlike, however nonsensical that may seem. Sometimes you just get tired of the people you know. Please, I just... I couldn't finish what I was about to say before I felt a needle enter my arm. The stranger had injected me with something, and before I knew it, I was fast asleep again. When I woke this time, I felt groggy and sluggish. I looked around, though my vision was slightly blurred. After a while, it became refocused and I realized I was in the living room. I could tell it was daytime because light made its way around the curtains that were drawn over the windows. Otherwise, it was still dark in the apartment. I'm not sure why it took me so long to realize how horribly messed up things had gotten over the night. I was still sitting in my bed, meaning someone had moved my bed into the living room, and all the furniture from the living room had been moved in front of the front door. 
blocking anyone from entering or leaving. How could a lone person possibly do all of this? And more importantly, why? My bed was situated in the middle of the empty living room. The ropes no longer confined me to the bed. And then I noticed how painful my lips felt. I ran my fingers over them and noticed something unnerving. There were holes above the upper lip and below the lower lip, as if they had been pierced. Just like Candace, just like in my dream. Now frantic, I tried to get up, though I was too quick and I fell down to the floor. I lifted my shirt sleeves looking for where I was injected. Sure enough, there was a mark on my right arm. What I wished had just been a nightmare was actually real. As I lay on the floor, my mind trying to make sense of what was happening, I saw an arm with a gold bracelet sticking out from behind the bedroom door. I slowly got up from the floor and edged closer to the bedroom door as slowly as I could. I opened the door and found Candace's body on the ground. Poor Candace. If I had only done something when I saw her in the hallway earlier. I fell to my knees, feeling incredibly weak and nauseous. My bedroom looked odd without my bed in it, which is why it took me a moment to notice that in the far corner of the room was a crouched, naked figure, eyeing me, frowning. Tears had been running down his face. He was bald, with dark eyes, and in his hand was a knife. Some people don't know how to treat their friends, he said in his low, raspy voice. It was almost as if he was pouting. Everyone deserves to have new friends, though. At this, he smiled. Sweet, sweet candy. She didn't taste sweet, though. Too bad. I noticed dried blood around his mouth. Oh well, here's to new friendships. I've got a feeling this one's going to last, he said, grinning. He pulled a heavy metal bar from behind him and stood up. He walked briskly to me, and a swing and then crack. I was howling in pain. White, hot, searing pain surged from my leg where he hit me with the bar. And then, crack, the kneecap on my other leg exploded after another swing. I still cringe when I think about it. The pain was simply overwhelming and tears were running down my face. Looking satisfied with his work, he grabbed a padlock from the desk near him. Some friends are too loud, don't you think? My vision blurred and he smiled down at me. And then the world turned dark and I passed out. That was weeks ago. Or months. Who knows? I'm allowed the luxury to write on scraps of paper when I can, such as now. He unlocks the padlock that keeps my mouth shut sometimes and feeds me. Sometimes he sits next to me and pets me like a master and his cat. It used to make me want to die every time he did it, but now it's become part of living. He's hidden my phone somewhere, and sometimes there are visitors who knock on the door, but with the blockade of furniture in front of it, there's no possibility of guests. He even pays the rent and bills somehow, preventing eviction. I don't know who he is. I don't know why he does this. But I belong to Mr. Friendly now. Our sleepless tales have come to an end. Close your eyes, drift off, and don't look under the bed. The No Sleep Podcast is licensed under a Creative Commons license, 2011. Some rights reserved.